Hello everybody, welcome back to the Sustainable Schools Virtual Summit. My name is Melanie Harwood and I am the co-founder of Educate Global. It's one of my, it's my passion project in life. It's my, yes, my reason for being, my life mission is, is to get schools to be sustainable and to deliver the creme de la creme of climate literacy certified teachers throughout the world because schools have a huge impact on everything that we do. Now, my guest today is the most incredibly interesting man. I mean, he's very handsome. I said to him this morning, I said, my word, how do you get to look that good every day? Anyway, well, enough of that. This is Matthew Benjamin, ladies and gentlemen. And Matthew is going to be telling us all about school uniforms. <laughs> Let's go, Matthew, welcome. Hi, Mel, how are you? I'm good today, thank you. Yes, so Matthew, yes. tell us all about your path to getting to here and, and to what you do. And then we're gonna, we're gonna dive deep into, into a very interesting subject that most people would never ever have thought would yeah. impact on our, on, our, on our world, on our planet and, and sustainability. Exactly, well, okay. So I'll, I'll tell you how I, how I got here on my journey, so to speak. So um, I started off in men's tailoring in the UK. So uh, I joined a, a company called Tom James, a big American company, it's the largest custom clothing company in the world. Um, and I joined their London office 2010. Um, and I just finished an, M an MBA in luxury management. Uh, I kind of had my, my MBA hat on, if you like. And um, they didn't have an office in the Middle East. Um, so we still had clients in Dubai that were using us in London and it seemed like a bit of a no-brainer to, to get out to Dubai um, with the, the amount of potential that, that, it, that it had and still has. Um, and I sort of said to them, right, can I, can I go out to Dubai and set up, set up an office? They said, um, put together a business plan, which I did. Um, and then I was set certain goals, which I had to hit along the way. And then fast forward a couple of years I moved to Dubai in 2012 to open that office uh, and grow that office and build a team and, and so on um, but as I became more aware of the the manufacturing processes in fashion I then became more aware of how unsus unsustainable things were um, so although I was working for the largest custom clothing company in the world I also then kind of found out I was working for uh, uh, one of the most unsustainable um, and then trying to sort of implement change you know in such a large organization isn't isn't always easy um, and it led me to then start my own business or co-found my own uh, bespoke menswear business but with sustainability being a core part of that so using organic cotton to make shirts and using organic silk for ties and using organic wool for suits uh, and being the only uh, luxury menswear brand actually doing that um, but being a luxury brand and being you know bespoke menswear you can only cater to, a, to quite a, a niche small part of the market so although it, it was certainly noble and, and was great and, and really developed my passion within sustainability I wanted to do something that had more of an impact um, which then leads on to school uniforms so so that's a sort of brief uh, overview of, of, of how I got to, to this point We've like done, we've done you in like, it's like the speed dating version, like five seconds. Boom, yeah, boom, boom, very, boom, boom. yeah, yeah, very quick. So we just got straight to it. <laughs> and you said school uniforms. Because I know that when I first met you, I was like, what? <laughs> why? Yeah. And then yeah. I was like, huh, oh, why? I didn't even, I didn't even think about it. You know, we had a, I had a talk for the Sustainable Schools Virtual Summit the other day with a guy called Tim Collins who told me about school apps communication apps and i'm thinking what are you talking about lads and then he was like he was sort of extrapolating and saying to me don't you realize that we can make these schools far more sustainable by this 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 just from a school app from communications and i'm like <gasps> and yeah. he's giving me the numbers and i was thinking ah i didn't even consider how that you know in my head i'm thinking oh we're gonna you know, get these climate literacy teachers out there. And when I met you for the first time and you said sustainable school uniforms. Yeah. And I thought to myself, oh, 
this is going to be a game changer, a huge yeah. game changer. Matthew, how difficult is it to, what's the process? How do you know when a school uniform is sustainable or not? So, um, I mean, going back to sort of fashion as a whole, so fashion is one of the most unsustainable um, industries in the world. Um, depending Why on- Why is that? Um, because of the, the raw materials. So one thing I'm gonna talk about is that is if we start at say the raw materials, you know, part of things and, and, and how much water that uses and energy it uses and the emissions from it and then the dyeing and the processing and then, um, and then later on we're actually wearing it and, and, and washing uh, synthetics, the micro plastic pollution that that causes. Um, there's a number of, sort of different stages along that product's life, all the way up to, you know, once we're done with our clothing, what happens to it then? Um, you know, most of it ends up in, in landfill. So 80% of all clothing worldwide goes to landfill. Um, 80%? 80%, which is huge. Um, only 1% of all clothing ends up getting recycled into, into new textiles. So there's a lot of, a lot of potential there. And, essentially when it then comes back to uniforms you know when we consider that fashion is one of the most polluting industries in the world between the ages of four and 18 mm. four and 16 the, the clothes that we wear the most are school uniforms um, and then in addition to that you know kids grow so much during that time what happens to those uniforms um, you know when they're outgrown um, so in regards to your question uh, um, about materials um, and, and how uniforms are unsustainable at the moment, they're typically made using virgin synthetic fibers. So um, polyester, nylon, um, other synthetics, um, or in some cases, cotton, but conventional cotton, which uses a lot of pesticides and, and fertilizers. So for every single item that exists and for every single material, there is a sustainable alternative. Um, and it's just about, you know, making that sustainable choice and, um, and, and, and educating schools and, and parents and kids that this does exist. And this is the impact that, that we can have um, by choosing a sustainable route. Now, Matthew, when we talk about now, when I've been doing my, my training, you know, I've been on a journey myself for the last sort of two and a half years. I knew about climate change. I knew about the climate emergency. I knew about global warming. I did not quite grasp how it affected every single aspect of my life. Yeah. Everything I do, everything I touch, taste, smell, hear, see, everything. I, I didn't realize. And now, now that I've been learning more, I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, I wish I didn't know all that I know. <laughs> now... It's the, that, that funny old thing where we have um, that, the, the, where, where, where society says, oh, but we can't stop using fossil fuels because it's, it's, it's going to be too expensive. But when we work out the cost to the planet and society and, and industry actually using fossil fuels and using these, these materials and methodologies that we have been using is far, far more expensive for us in the long run. Exactly. So I did a recent training. I did the Al Gore's climate um, reality training. And there was something in there that really struck me where they said, if we don't start, you know, we can see that, we can see that downward trend. We can see that those, those financial figures that if you, if you are in fossil fuels, you are gonna have to take your money and start building new systems that are environmentally friendly and sustainable, or else your business model is gone. And yeah. we are finding that the likes of BP, Shell, the biggest, biggest fossil fuel companies are now segueing and pivoting into alternative, into green energy. They have yeah. to, they have no choice. Yeah. How, do, how will the fashion industry do that same segue? Where do you see it happening? Do you see the big brands like the Christian Dior's and the Versace's and the Michael Kors? Do you see them having to pivot first? Or do you see it being niche brands that are going to force that pivot? How do you see it working? So 
niche brands are are already forcing it, um, nice. which is great. Um, but for there to be, you know, really large systemic impact, the larger brands, you know, need to to get on board. And and some some are some aren't. I think luxury um, is is um, is an, an interesting one because I was. Uh, last year or year before I was at a sustainable conference over in Milan um, and I was sat with um, a sustainability um, expert if you like who worked for a large luxury um, group Um, and we were discussing the fact that you know us at that time as a a sustainable um, bespoke menswear brand using organic cotton and looking to use organic wool at the time Um, and I was discussing with her you know, these other brands, these luxury brands, like what were they doing and, you know, were they using it, et cetera. Um, and actually there are luxury brands out there that do use organic cotton and they do use organic wool, mm-hmm. um, but they just don't shout about it. Um, and the reason is because it makes up such a small percentage of their overall range of products that if you were paying you know whatever the price is for a for a for a t-shirt or whatever whatever the product may be you you kind of expect it to be good Mm -hmm. um, because you're paying a certain price Mm -hmm. um where the conundrum is for for luxury brands is okay if we then start saying actually this product is good because this is made from organic cotton for example Mm -hmm. what does the consumer then say well well, hold on a minute For, for the past however long i've been buying this product and you're telling me now that actually it's not good. Um, so there's that's a, a, a sort of a challenge, I guess, in the luxury industry. Um, but there are many brands out there now that are um, are starting to to implement sustainability. I think from a business perspective, you know, if if you want to be a sustainable business and you want to have long term growth, um, whether it's fashion or whether it's education. Um, you have to now be looking at how do we, you know, really implement and bring in sustainability and and um, and not just make it a, a small capsule collection, for example, if it's a fashion brand, or, or not just make it, a, you know, a very sort of uh, a box to tick if yeah. it's school, but really look at how do we, you know, implement this from the ground up, you know, and, and really make it a core part of, of our business. Mm, are we are seeing that... You know, uh, I had a a meeting the other day with an incredible lecturer that I'm going to be working with. She teaches transition engineering. Okay. And and she says, you know, most sustainability directors or managers, they just box tickers. They think, oh, well, we'll just say that we're sustainable. Yeah. But the buying public, the masses, now want to see, they want to see the the evidence. Yeah. when you decided to make a range of school uniforms that is completely sustainable, what were you looking at? How do you, how do you, how can you say, you know, how can you say to the public, this is sustainable? You know, how can they, how can you prove it? What, what, let, uh, you know, it's just a fascinating concept. That, yeah, that's a great question because um, I think now um, sort of, Going back slightly to what you were saying about the consumers, you know, consumers are now wanting more sustainable products. Um, and that is driving the decisions of um, companies in different sectors. Um, but I feel because sustainability has become this buzzword, if you like, a lot of companies are just jumping on the bandwagon. Um, and now if we were to ask 10 different people what sustainability means, we would get 10 slightly different answers. Um, So for us, it was important to really define that and make it digestible for, uh, in our case, for for schools, um, but also for the, for the, uh, the, the the everyday consumer. So what we did, we we partnered with a company called Green Story. um, We're based out in Canada. And what they do is a deep dive into the supply chain. So this is, for example, from where the cotton was cultivated to where it was gin, to where it was dyed, to, um, to where it was made into to, to a product and all the different steps along the way. Um, and then with that, we're able to see how much water we use, how much energy we use and how much emissions we use for each product. 
so I'll give you an example. Um, we were speaking to a school um, last week, um, and one of their products was a 100% polyester polo top. Um, so they wanted to switch that to a sustainable material. And there's different options with that. We could have done it to 100% organic cotton, but they wanted a certain, a certain look and feel. So we, we were looking at switching it to 100% recycled polyester. And just by switching that, we would save nine liters of drinking water, 382 light bulbs powered for an hour, and 2.35 kilometers of driving emissions. For per, one per, 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 per polo top. Wow, so, wow, wow. So if we, and I'll give you another example, which is for, um, for the chinos that they had. So the chinos were made from 65% virgin polyester and 35% conventional cotton. Um, so there we looked at switching it to 100% organic cotton. And with that product, we'd save 11.65 liters of drinking water, 370 light bulbs powered for an hour and 4.24 kilometers of driving emissions. Um, so the numbers are quite staggering. And then when you look at that over, um, over the amount of students that they have, and then the amount of sets of uniforms that, that a parent would buy their child, and then also look at all the various other products, you know, that that um, that would make up that range of uniforms. You then start start to really see how staggering the savings could be. Just one uh, school, one school. That is just that's just one polo top in the school. Cheetos. Polo tops. Yeah. So we're not even talking about school jumpers and cardigans and blazers and jackets and trainers and yeah, yeah. PE kits. Yeah, you know? exactly. I mean, I look. I know when I know. I look at my daughter's cupboard and I think, okay, so we have a skirt, mm -hmm. we have PE leggings, we have yeah. a PE polo top, we have a PE jacket, we have. PE, you know, these special leg warmers. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, everything in there, trousers, skirts, yeah. Yeah. tops, jumpers, blazer. Yeah. My so, goodness, Matthew, this is a revolution. Well, I mean, I, I, you know, we haven't looked at the total impact of an entire school across all of the different areas, but I would, I would think that uniforms has got to be right up there in terms of the most impactful thing within a school. Okay, so where do we go from here? How do schools start transitioning? Because obviously, initially, the schools that will transition are those that are educated enough to understand about sustainability. So it's, it's like, I'm finding that with our Educate Global Award schools, so we start off very basically, we've got that bronze award where they start, they dip their toes in, we get that team ready. Then we get them through silver where more teachers come aboard, and then we get them. Now I know we, we're launching the gold award training this week. That we've got the, uh, it's the, they will be climate literate and carbon literate specialist teachers certified by Manchester University. There's nothing like it. And I know that it's going to be those schools that are going to be measuring. I've just come off a Zoom um, this morning before you and I have joined each other with an eco group in a school that are delivering our carbon footprint buster challenge. And the children are talking about having food waste monitors standing to check the food. And I'm thinking this is because the school has embarked on a complete transition. This is transition engineering. This is how we change the entire ethos and focus and thought processes within that school. So it's not just the teachers and the head teachers, it's everybody. It's the janitor, it's the pupils, it's, it's the business manager, the parents. So it's going to be those schools that are aware of the impact that their clothing, their school uniforms are going to have on sustainability on the planet. Yeah. Those are the schools that are going to start moving this way. You and I know that once one starts, it becomes like a, a, a stampede. Yeah. It's going to be, so how are you going to be able to, is it, does it work on numbers? Is it the more schools that you have, the more the impact that you can have obviously, or 
you know, the, 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 the build, the development process and the manufacturing process. How do we know that those clothes are sustainably sourced? How can we prove it? So in terms of proving it, the technology now exists. Um, and, and I'm glad you asked that question. Um, so how we prove it is by using blockchain. Um, so within the actual label of a product, whether it's a, a teacher or a student or a parent or whoever it may be, you could scan the logo within that product, it'll be a QR code. And then that will take you to a site which details everything about that product, its entire journey. Um, and then that, all of that information is verified by a third party and using blockchain, an auditable account of that is created. So you know that it's, you know, it's, um, that, that, that it's true. Um, but essentially, I think a lot, uh, the, the more companies that start to use this, that start to, you know, to, to use the technology that now exists, the, the better. And the more that, um, whether it's a school or another organization starts to, uh, to demand that this level of transparency um, and, tra and, tra and traceability it is, um, is common throughout all of the products, you know, the better, um, because that would then force other suppliers to, to you know, to, to get on, get on the, the train before it leaves the station, basically. Um, so for us, it's important that, yeah, we don't only just say it's sustainable. Um, we, we show you how it's sustainable and then we're able to prove that what we've said is, is right. Um, and then also at the end of the process, be able to, something that you just mentioned, is offset the, so first we reduce and then we offset the, the impact that the uniforms have because there's always going to be some impact. There is always going to be some impact. We know that. Matthew, you've just absolutely, I'm lost for words. I'm speechless. You've blown my mind. My, head, my brain is going at a million miles an hour. This has huge implications for absolutely everything in education, in everything. So, so who, how did you come up with this? Come on, tell us, how did you come up with this idea? What um, was it? What, when, when was that eureka moment for you? So, the, I mean, in terms of the idea, it's something that I'd, I'd had in my mind for um, now, it's now about 18 months. Um, but it wasn't actually until, uh, until the pandemic hit that I, I actually had the time to really develop it. Um, you know, before that, working away, you know, really you know, busy with, with the other business. Um, although this was something I really wanted to do, it, as I said, I just didn't have the, the time to really sit down and, and, and plan it out. So it, in a way that the silver, the, the silver lining of, you know, the, the pandemic was having the time to really, you know, I asked myself, you know, what is it that I wanted to do over the next few years? I, what, you know, where did I really want to focus you know, most of my energy? Um, and it was and it was on 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 this venture. So in, in terms of you know, I don't I don't think it's, it's it, I don't think it's rocket science. You know, I haven't sort of uh, yes, we're doing something new in terms of uniforms and the the sort of the 360 approach that we're we're adopting. Um, but I kind of just think it's kind of common sense. You know, we can make uniforms that are sustainable and we can help kids be more connected to the things that they wear and the things that they buy. So when they get older, they're more conscious consumers and they hopefully pass that on to other generations. Mm. Um, you know, all of the, the materials and the technology exists, you know, and it doesn't even have to cost more than current uniforms in, in, in a lot of cases. So it, it's, it's, for me, it's a no brainer. Um, it's just about, you know, you've gone through that process, educating, um, you know, those around it. It's awareness. Is, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's being aware. It's, it's yeah. really starting to think, hang on a minute, are my clothes sustainable? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's that, you know, I, I, you know, I believe that, um, particularly with schools that they, you know, want to be sustainable. They want to set the right, um, example, you know, they want to, to, to educate and empower, you know, they, their students to be global citizens you know I, I, I don't believe that anyone goes into education you know without you know wanting to do that you know it, it, it doesn't make sense so 
it's just a case of letting you know educators know and, and aware as you say that that this exists um, and that this is very impactful when we look at a school's you know um, footprint um, that things something can be done about it and and you know it's it's not it's not that hard to to sort of implement um, and and it will yeah it will help help to re to reduce the, the overall impact. Matthew, where where are you starting with it now? You are you you're starting to roll it out in schools in Dubai, and what are your plans going forward? Um, you know, what do you need? What what if I if I could if I could be give you, have a genie in a lamp here and say to you, Matthew, one wish. What would you like? One wish. Um, well, I would say. Uh, a thousand <laughs> schools worldwide right now, just to start. Right with. Now, a thousand. A, fa a thousand, just, 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 yeah. I, I mean, it could. I could say more than that, but that would. Uh, to, uh, to get the ball rolling, you'd want to get the ball rolling. To get the ball rolling. But how we're working at the moment, we're, we're now having, you know, real developing our conversations with schools to start supplying uniforms for next term, next year's term, which would be September next year, mm -hmm. um, because it's a bit of a process and. Also, schools how how it works is they'll have um, contracts with suppliers, and it really depends on on timing and you know are those contracts up for renewal and, and so forth. Um, but we're also speaking we're speaking to schools in the UK. Um, we're speaking to schools in the UAE. Um, from from January, we'll start to speak to schools in Australia, uh, New Zealand, South Africa. You know, they they start term at a different time to yeah, they start in January. Yeah. Um, wow. So, yeah, wow. we, we can supply uniforms anywhere and, and any school that, you know, wants to reduce their impact by switching to sustainable uniforms, we're more than happy to work with. Matthew, you do know that you're going to have more than a thousand schools within the next couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I thought you were going to say a million. <laughs> a, million a million schools. I mean, it would, it would overwhelm our, um, our, our our factories at the moment no, it wouldn't, because you million. would just you would just scale up you would just scale. <laughs> no you heard it here everybody no i know i i we when we launched educate global yeah uh, we went i approached the, <laughs> it was a weird story i approached the un denise and i we went they said oh you come around here. it's a long story how we got there but they said, oh, come around to Geneva, you know, we'll, we'll get, we went there, we thought we we're going for one day. <laughs> Five days later, they kept wheeling us. Every 30 <laughs> minutes, an hour, we had to do a pitch. And I said to Denise, there's 30 agencies in this one agency. What are we going to do? She said, she says, honey, y'all, we just got to keep on telling them, keep on telling them. You know, Denise is from Texas. And I'm like, ah, oh, Denise, you know, five days later, then they went, you do know it's never going to work. <laughs> and we said, it is. Yeah. And they said, no, no, it's not possible. Well, they said, it's not possible. And, and I think, you know, I looked at her, and I, I said to her, they think that they're just going to fob us off and get rid of us. And they yeah. said, can you go and get into 80 schools in the United Kingdom? And if you and I know how difficult, you know, schools just do not let you in, you know. But what we did was we launched Educate Global. We launched the first iteration of the Climate Change Teacher Course on the, I never forget it, 22nd of April, 2019. Nobody came. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> happened. And Denise said to me, oh, we failed. I said, no, we didn't fail. I said, no, no nobody's going to say to me that I failed. Well, I learned how to use Twitter direct messaging. Okay. And I harassed teachers. I mean, yeah. I did. I har I was saying, please, you've got to do this. You know, if you don't do this course, I'm going to have to go and lie in front of a train or a bus. <laughs> <laughs> I had one head teacher. She said to me, if you don't stop harassing me, I'm going to report you to the police. <laughs> and I said, no, look, I will leave you alone if you just do my course. Yeah. So she messaged me and she said, you're not going to believe it. I, I did one because I said, just do one because there's five in, yeah. the, in the entry point. She said, I've done one. And then I did the next one. And then I, and I said, you're kidding me. She said, I did all five mm. in one day. I said, no, she said, I did. I just loved, she said, I loved it. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. Well, Matthew, it went viral. It, you know, we're in, we're in 329,000 schools in 43 countries. And we've now, even though we've changed Educate Global and we've turned it into this 
this process where the head teacher nominates their sustainability and climate change lead. They come in, they achieve the bronze, then the silver, then the gold. It is not stopping. So, you know, you're saying, oh, I'd like a thousand. You know, you know me, I was like, all I want is 80. <laughs> <laughs> And now, but yeah, maybe maybe it will be a million then. It, um, it, it grew so quickly, you know, that we were like, we had to get Tim Collins on board. I said, Tim, I'm in serious trouble. This thing has gone viral. I don't know what to do. I can't yeah. cope with it. So I I I can see with what you are doing, and the 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 financial implications and the sustainability implications. Every school must be accountable to their pupils and their community yeah and and they want to be accountable you know this is why teachers are coming that's why head teachers are signing up interestingly it was the uae that changed everything with educate global it was dubai it was a school in dubai it was the kindergarten starters with a head teacher called asha alexander contacted us on zoom and said um all my teachers are going to do your course and i thought she's lying I just thought, no, this is, this is not going to happen. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, a week later, there were 323 of them. And I was wow. like, I thought, what? And that was when I realized um, I, I was in a meeting the next week with the, with the leader of Hammersmith and Fulham Borough Council and the, the whole team, the whole leadership team. And I said, do you know there's something really interesting happening in Dubai? And he said, what? I said, there's a school over there where every single teacher is an educate global climate change teacher. And he said, can we go and visit them? And I said, what a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, you know, and then I said, okay, well, you know, we, we, and, and that was when the guardian, the guardian said, can we come with you? And I was like, yeah, yeah that's great. I and they did a, you know, and they did the guardian visual feature on, and they called it the army of Greta's. Mm -hmm. And you think that you start with, one head teacher, one school, yeah. and that that has now become something. And they are coming every day. Every day, there's a school from Dubai that's emailing and saying, "Can we do this? Can we come on board?" It's it's when we start getting visionaries in leadership. Um, we've been approached by somebody very high up in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and they want Educate Global in. I mean, you're gonna have to sit down. Thirty five thousand schools in wow. all of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So I think you're going to have more than a thousand schools very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's just one. It takes one one, yeah. And, and everybody joins. And yeah. and when we have visionaries, leaders, leaders that say our country is going to become sustainable, our nation. You know, this leader that I've been speaking to just said to me, "Can you deliver Educate Global to 1.5 billion people in the Arab-speaking world?" And I said, "Of course." you know we know how to do it we've, we've we've looked at how we've built our processes now we're scaling up and we can easily do that and he said can you translate everything into arabic and i said look here's our website it's got a toggle on it it instantly translates into 52 languages and he just said you get it you get what i want let's go so wow. it's it's when when people start hearing about what you're doing and you just need one and yeah. it's that one school. So when I come through to Dubai, I'm going to be coming through for an awards ceremony in the next, um, I think in, in January, February. Okay. I would love to go and visit that school that was the first. Yes. Yeah. So if we if we can go, if we can see this, the very first school yeah. that has the, the fully sustainable uniforms and we say you were the first in the yeah. world yeah and now we know where we're going and if that one if we can start with one yeah. we will have a thousand ten thousand a hundred thousand yeah i i know that with what you are doing it is so exciting because you know matthew i don't think you quite realize that your method can be transitioned into almost any delivery system for schools you do know that yeah, what yeah, you've just yeah. been speaking about with the blockchain, yeah, using the technology to 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 qualify and quantify our footprint for every single item that we are receiving, it's mind blowing. Yeah, I'm, you're a genius. You, I'm well, speaking to a genius. 
I, I, I wouldn't call myself a genius. I mean, the, the blockchain side of it isn't our business. But it doesn't um, matter no, because you've matter. actually you've 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 thought about blockchain and said this is how I can use blockchain to to prove that I'm not I'm not ticking a box here that I really am delivering something that is so unique. It's I mean here's me saying oh I want a kite mark I mean come on that's just another <laughs> box tick you know now you've got me thinking now I'm saying I don't want a kite mark I want a blockchain code <laughs> <laughs> I want to really see it's it's when I can see it mm. you know we us humans you know we say is there a higher power because I can't yeah. see it yeah I want to see it so mm. now you've shown me now you know we talk about blockchain and people go. I don't understand what blockchain is, <laughs> but it's when I see the QR code telling me this is where it started. Here's the farm. Here's yeah. the individual that picked it. Here's the vehicle that drove it to market. Here's the it went and manufactured in this factory here. Yeah. That, that you start changing the world one step at a time. That is transition engineering. At its yeah. at its, you are a case study. You do realize that. So what is the name of your business, Matthew? The name of the business is Capes, which is spelled K-A-P-E-S. Okay, um, and, and where can we get hold of you? How can we, how can we beat a, a path to your door? So you can find us at www.capes.co. Okay. Um, and if anyone wants to get in touch with me directly, then Matthew at capes.co. It's Matthew with two Ts. Um, and I'll just tell you why we're called capes. Um, it's to do with heroes wearing capes. So one of the things that we've committed to, and we're speaking to a number of NGOs at the moment, um, and we'll work with schools and any NGOs that they specifically work with, is that for every uniform that we sell, we will provide a free uniform to a child who needs one in a developing country. Um, and the reason that came about was I read this report um, which was um, conducted in Kenya um, and they found that by giving a uniform to a child who didn't have one um, it reduced absenteeism by up to 62 percent um, so that was a, a eureka moment for me and it was important for myself and also the co-founders that have come on board to give something back so um, capes because yeah the, the kids that are wearing the uniforms are, are going to be heroes you know, because it, cause it's not just great for the environment and, and you know, good for the people making the uniforms, but also, you know, gives back to, to kids who, who really, you know, need uniforms to, to get an education. Matthew, we are working on a project with um, schools in Uganda, Zimbabwe and Kenya at the moment. And the, 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 schools, the schools in the developed countries are sponsoring those schools to do Educate Global and partnering, partnering with them. And I would like to ensure that we do something with CAPES so that our developed schools will be signing up with you and getting their uniforms through you and then their partner schools in Uganda, Nairobi, Kenya, um, Zimbabwe, all over will be getting the benefits of their purchasing those uniforms. That would be amazing. You've, you've completely, so where do I buy shares in your company, Matthew? Because <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you are like my hot tip. You are my hot share tip for today, <laughs> honestly, guys. If, you, if anybody's gonna be investing, yeah. you've got to be investing, or, or you're not gonna be selling shares. You're not gonna float this on the market just yet. Not just yet, but we, we may do a, um, a crowdfund, um, uh, in the in a not too distant future, um, okay. so well, yes, we'll I'll be I'll there. Know, I, 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 don't, I honestly don't think you're going to need crowd. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are. You've got something so unique, and this is going to be the first talk that I'm going to be doing with you. But you and I are going to do more in the future because yeah. our, we found that our sustainable schools virtual summit is now becoming a rolling summit because there were speakers coming in that are speaking about such di diverse things. It's not just about teachers learning how to teach climate literacy. This is about schools becoming sustainable, saving money, and then, uh, then positively impacting on themselves and their wider communities 
and global communities. That yeah. is what schools have the power to do. We just don't realize that a teacher doesn't just teach children. They teach indirectly an entire community, an entire yeah. society. So yeah. we need, my mission is slightly different to yours. I want a hundred million um, educate global sustainability and climate change lead teachers in the world. Mm -hmm. And I want every single school to start working towards sustainability. And your mission is to get those uniforms onto those children so that we can start changing the face of fashion globally. Because once they learn about their school uniforms, they're going to question everything else that they buy. Yes. That exactly. is absolutely phenomenal. That is how we change the world. Yes. That is how we turn the situation of um, the climate emergency into an answer, into a yeah. solution. Yeah. Matthew, I can't wait to hear your next installment and I can't wait to meet you. In the to go through and meet your schools and have a chat with them. And I can't wait to pick up the phone and say, Matt, I hope you're ready. We've got 35,000 schools coming on board. <laughs> 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 it's so cool. This is, this, is, this is it. This is sustainability. This is sustainable schools. This is what it's all about. Yeah. If there's anybody out there that is listening to this that feels that they have something that they would like to talk about or an invention, I mean, you're not going to believe this. We were approached the other day. I mean, I'm segueing here. There was a guy contacted us and said, I've got this invention that can, to, that can fit into a river mm -hmm. and, it, and it can power up to 20,000 households and businesses four, five miles near to it. And I'm like, oh. And, and he said, and it, fit, and it works with data systems, so we can provide data to the schools for free. We can power the, the schools for free. And I just said, this is a game changer. And he said, yeah. He said, we can, we can completely transform um, renewable energy, it, green energy around those areas next to rivers. And I'm like, you got a deal. Where can I buy, buy shares? <laughs> <laughs> so... I can't wait. We are going to be doing lots of these. If anybody has a talk for the Sustainable Schools Virtual Summit, please get in touch with me. My name is Melanie Harwood. You can reach our team at support at educateglobal.org. Don't forget two C's in Educate Global. That is support, S-U-P-P-O-R-T, at educateglobal.org, E-D-U-C-C-A-T-E-G-L-O-B-A-L.org. And we're going to hear more from Matthew. We're going to be having another talk. We're going to be going with, I think what we should do is we should just come with you on a road trip. Yeah. I mean, once the, once uh, the, 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 the pandemic is subsided and I guess we have a vaccine, but um, then we can, yeah, we can look at going to, to, uh, to go to a cotton farm, to go to manufacturers and look at the whole process. Matthew, what you are doing is incredible. I think, I think you are, you are going to change education and the way we think about fashion on a global scale. And I, you have no idea what is going to be happening for you. You are a genius. You are a genius. Thank you. And I want to thank you so very much for joining me. And I'm looking forward to our road trip so we can go and have a look at those factories, speak to the pupils, speak to the teachers, speak to the parents and speak to the business managers of those schools to see so when you know how are they monitoring are they measuring because we're going to start measuring those carbon footprints of those schools we're going to compare that school's carbon footprint with their uniforms with that school's carbon footprint with their uniforms and we're going to start seeing the difference and seeing which school is making a difference why would parents send their child to that school because it's a sustainable school and why they would decide to not send their child to that school because it's not a sustainable school yet. So that's where we're heading. Thank you so much for joining me. And to anybody listening, everything is going to be transcribed. All of the links are going to be below this video and in the podcast. If you want to get hold of Matthew, you want to get hold of me, you want to get hold of anybody at Educate Global, we will see you all on the other side. Bye-bye then. See you now.